Hello everyone, this is Mr. Khan from Pakistan. Uh, this is going to be a very short video. Uh, we will cover like a very, very entry uh, beginner level stuff about uh, dynamic reversing. Uh, just imagine that this is a rooted phone and you have installed uh, some basic apps. So obviously, you are uh, trying your luck in this game so you must have termux uh, and game guardian alongside the game and uh, the next thing that you are going to do is you must have some form of IDA already installed okay so I have this uh, 7.0 version already installed and uh, you can also use uh, the latest versions but I like the old version uh, 7.0 open the file location and go to the debug server folder okay and then go inside and you will see uh, some servers for remote debugging take like uh, the Android server for um, the normal version Android server take it and push it inside uh, the emulator you already know how to do it so put it in the document G and pictures folder okay and then from inside the emulator uh, make sure that before doing anything inside your tools uh, the root is uh, enabled and the permissions are allowed to the program okay take the file from the PC side and put it in system here I have already put it inside so just put it here and when you put it here uh, go to properties and see if the permissions are readable and writable and also make sure that when you run a DB command on uh, uh, this emulator the LD player version mm, make sure that the file that you have just passed to the emulator uh, inside the system folder it has uh, root access and executable permission and you can check it with uh, this command with plus X and apply this to the Android server okay like it okay okay if this error is coming this means that you have to remount the file system do it like this and after that uh, go to super user access uh, go to system folder and then uh, apply the ch mode command okay all right and after that this command when it is completed uh, exit the shell mode and then just do this adb uh, forward tcp i think it is 23946 here let's find it out 23946 uh, to TCP 23946 okay when this is done on the Android side uh, do this dot slash Android server okay now the remote debug server for IDA is launched 
and it is listening on this port okay now the next thing that you want to do is uh, go to the emulator side you already have a library make sure it is uh, decompiled oh, sorry uh, disassembled and let's say we have like uh, we have like this sorry for the interruptions and notifications all right so uh, we are here in the emulator detection offset uh, uh, function mm. what you are going to do is connect this uh, IDA to your Android phone okay and make sure that uh, your Android phone is rooted and all the steps are perfectly executed after that just uh, start your game from here okay when it is started just uh, select this remote arm Linux Android debugger and then go to debugger attached to process okay um, it will give you a list of applications running inside your mobile phone just attach to the game here then click OK it will go to dynamic analysis mode okay and the offsets will change uh, 3 3 a f 4 etc these will go to new ways 4 4 3 3 a f 4 because the game is uh, the game library is in the 4400000 base okay the base address of the library in is 440000 inside this uh, phone consider this a phone now because this is not a phone this is an emulator and it is not behaving like a phone the problems uh, you will face is that the registers values will not be available when uh, when you are debugging okay uh, so and I, I you see when you double click the value of r0 it will uh, give you a problem it will show you that uh, the value is not available yet. okay so these are not available so these are not working and uh, we cannot see anything here so it is not useful but I am just showing you how you can uh, use dynamic analysis using your rooted phone now see here that it is a simple breakpoint that I have put on the NOSDK delete report data function okay I want to see when this function is called I want to see uh, that my phone will tell me that this function is called okay just just put breakpoint like this by clicking here and continue execution from here by clicking the play button the game will play you can apply your cheats and anything whatever you have but since the breakpoint is here the game is automatically paused and you can see all of this in the output um, the output view here you can break these windows to a place where you can see it better uh, this place was better uh, the export should be removed from here all right put it here the exports location is near the imports up here all right and these are the threads running inside the PC now you saw an error uh, we will remove the breakpoint and we will continue and and now discard the error and it, we will see another error unknown signal uh, okay uh, we will continue we will try to continue the game sick child signal child status has changed okay no problem and then we will change it just to don't suspend uh, don't pass to the application and just silently discard it 
the game will go forward if this is a rooted phone for example these type of errors will not come up they, they will not pop up okay and the game is now going you see and new threads they will start and there are like many threads here they are running here and this is the threads window and you can resume or pause any thread that you want okay and uh, the game is moving forward and the library uh, whichever places are not uh, being correctly decrypted they are now correctly decrypted here okay you see the analysis is going on now you can also go and see the stack view here and you can see um, the values at different locations of this on the stake okay so if the stake calls a certain address uh, any function is calling uh, a certain stake you can come to the stake view and see uh, what is uh, the value uh, being held at that location okay so this is uh, like Th this will like uh, give you a clue uh, what's happening behind the scenes of the game this helps in reversing okay so you can see the stake is like a very big uh, collection of symbols and links and connections from one library to another library lots of things are here like we just saw a little bit above uh, ue4 game activity unfortunately this is the uh, like old version so we cannot uh, filter out the stake values so you can also see here that at this stake address we have a value which is holding this thing libgcloudvoice.so and inside this libgcloudvoice.so library uh, there is a function called fftwf codelet okay if you go to this function 32 underscore neon and enter then there is another uh, instruction inside 87f1 offset from this function inside this library which is communicating uh, to this value of the stake okay so so like this is like a global stake value which other functions can access at any time similarly you can see if uh, libu e4 is saving something on the stake and libanox is accessing you will see everything uh, from the stake here okay so and there are you see there are like 60 70 debuggers attached to the game they are these are functions that are checking the status of the game these are virtualized debuggers so they are preventing uh, the attachment of debugger to the game uh, ptrace uh, gdb these things are they are kind of hard to attach to the game all right so th 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 the stake is the main area uh, after the debug view window this is the IDA view but this is also called debug view now uh, this is the primary uh, importance and this is of secondary importance so we uh, jump from here to here and we see connectivities from here and then we check if this stake is uh, connected to IDA side uh, inside this library or not also you can see that uh, all the libraries inside the game are loaded here and the base addresses are also shown so libanox is loaded at this location similarly you can go down and see libu e4 uh, loaded at uh, i think uh, this can be filtered yes 
uh, this is loaded at 93 is 0900 so all the modules that uh, the game is using they are loaded here and can be seen so if you are debugging a certain uh, function let's say this function and we want to find out Uh, and if you want to find out uh, uh, what is the value of the R7 register before it is being pushed to the stake so the R7 register we can put a breakpoint here when the breakpoint is reached inside the game we can come here and see the value of R7 register here and then you can manipulate it uh, you can experiment with it uh, this is how the, the, the this is like the very primary very basic level of um, knowledge about dynamic reversing and how it is done all right similarly you see that this is a, a monitor function and you can go ahead and see that uh, it is accessing an offset here and you see here that this offset is now holding a value of one okay in the static analysis you will not see uh, yeah, about this and uh, we have some other things like uh, the anti emulator function which is called in the 43206 uh, let's see let's go to the function 43206 which is uh, used for detection of uh, emulator inside uh, case 10 we see that it refers to uh, a certain offset later on and that offset is dynamically changing it detects emulator for uh, the game and then decides whether uh, it will continue execution in emulator lobby or in the mobile lobby So there are some classes. <coughs> we also this is the offset. this is the is emulator class you see now in the static analysis uh, if the emulator is detected you you will not see this in static uh, analysis okay so in the dynamic analysis we can see that the value is now one and the emulator has been detected already and the game is not uh, moving forward because it is analyzing everything so it will go very slow but already emulator has been detected here and the class used for uh, detection of uh, emulator is here which is connected on UE4 side at this address so all of these things the values of all DCDs and everything that you can see in the dynamic analysis but in static analysis uh, we don't see these values it is impossible for us to guess anything 
also you see all these values they are automatically filled up here they are not here in static analysis you see the, the these values are also filled up here now all these values are filled up these are uh, the benefit of dynamic analysis is this everything is more clear and rather than aiming in the dark about something that you don't know dynamic analysis is more beneficial but uh, then comes the point that for dynamic analysis uh, you have to be um, intermediate to expert level uh, reversal in static analysis okay so th th these are some things that uh, I wanted to show you tonight um, after this maybe one two months no more videos will come because I'm going to become very busy uh, but I will uh, continue this series later time if I got time but inshallah uh, hopefully th this will help you a lot in your reversing journey alright uh, thank you and uh, have a good night everybody